the deeply penetrative cries of a newborn baby mark the beginning of a wondrous journey echoing with profound meaning and stirring the depths of our hearts it's a symphony that captures the essence of life's fragility resilience and boundless potential in the delivery room amid a tapestry of emotions the first cry of a baby reverberates through the air announcing their arrival with an indomitable spirit it's a sound that transcends language and culture instantly evoking a primal response within us in that moment the world stands still as we bear witness to the miracle of a new life taking its first breath millions of years ago our early ancestors transitioned from walking on all fours to walking upright giving birth to a new way of life bipedalism was not merely a change in locomotion this monumental shift unfolded into an area of cultural and biological changes one of the most significant impacts it had other than locomotion was shift in birth mechanism let's explore the pivotal role of bipedalism as our early ancestors began walking on two legs it set in motion a series of adaptations that transformed not only our locomotion but also the birthing process welcome to anthromedia in this video we will explore how human birth process more specifically assisted birth is related to the evolution of upright walking across cultures giving birth has always been a communal affair rarely do women go through labor and delivery in isolation instead they reach out to the trusted companions close relatives friends or secluded midwives who stand by their side throughout this transformative journey the decisions surrounding childbirth are often not in the hands of birthing woman herself it is the attendant a knowledgeable guide who often determines the birth location delivery position tools used and even the behavior expected from the laboring mother what is even more fascinating is the influence of larger social group from ancient times to the present day predetermined factors set by society shape birthing experience it's like a tapestry woven with traditions norms and expectations reflecting the intricate dynamics of each culture some argue that our present experience of childbirth particularly the power and control we exert on our bodies and minds are not solely dictated by biology or evolutionary history instead they are heavily influenced by contemporary socio political contexts we find ourselves in there has been an argument in anthropology that the evolution of bipedalism in hominids transformed birth from an individual to a social event transferring control from a birthing individual to the attendant the selection for bipedalism sets hominids on a path towards developing cultural systems of knowledge and practices related to childbirth which often reside in the social group of birth attendants rather than the mother herself birth poses challenges for primate species due to the relatively large size of their fetal head compared to the birth canal while non-human primates gave birth without assistance the evolution of bipedalism in humans reoriented the birth canal requiring the human infant to undergo rotations for successful delivery bipedalism followed by subsequent increase in brain size created a profound challenge for childbirth with larger brains came larger heads introducing significant constraint on the birth canal evolution had to respond with remarkable adaptations in both our skeleton structure and cultural practices the shape of the pelvis changed facilitating a safer passage for the newborn cultural practices and collective wisdom emerged ensuring that mothers receive the support they needed during labor and delivery birth became a dance between biology and culture a testament to our resilience and adaptability as a species the modern birth mechanism is shaped by the long evolutionary history of bipedal locomotion and encephalization three key features define it rotation 
navigation of the three pelvic planes and the fetus emerging in the occipital anterior position. Rotation is necessary because the fetal head is largest in the sagittal dimension and the maternal birth canal consists of misaligned planes. The fetus rotates to align its sagittal dimension with the largest diameter of each plane. The occiput anterior position, though not without complications, is preferred as it optimizes the distribution of force during uterine contractions and facilitates efficient cervical dilation and fetal descent. The process of birth involves complex movements of the fetus through the birth canal, often described by the cardinal movements. However, there is natural variability in pelvic morphology and fetal presentation, leading to deviations from the idealized process. Secondary ultraciality characterized by infants being born in a relatively helpless state with underdeveloped brains is a crucial aspect of modern birth. Infants experience rapid brain growth during their first year, compensating for the constraints of the bony pelvic canal. This adaptation known as exterogestation or external gestation enables encephalization despite the limitations of childbirth. The emergence of secondary altriciality in the genus Homo had significant impacts on social structure and life history leading to changes in parental care. Non-human primate birth differs significantly from modern human birth due to the quadrupedal pelvis shape. In non-human primates, the fetus engages the birth canal anteriorly without rotation during descent and emerges in the occiput posterior position. Limited observations of primate births in the wild make it difficult to fully understand their birth mechanisms. However, there is evidence of difficult births in non-human primates, possibly due to encephalization and closely matched dimensions between pelvic canal and the fetal head. The transition to bipedalism in humans required skeleton adaptations, including anterior movement of the foramen magnum, anterior displacement of the sacrum, lengthening of the lower extremities, development of vulgus knees, a stable plantar foot, loss of divergent big toe, and changes in the shape of the pelvis. The female pelvis needed to balance locomotion, posture, organ support, and childbirth. While changes in the pelvis related to birth are not as significant as expected, there are important adaptations in plants by bipedalism. The broadening of the sacrum increases the transverse diameter of the birth canal, while the more prominent ischial spines stabilize the viscera during erect posture but also narrow the midplane of the pelvis. Lumbar lordosis, a curvature in the lower spine, is more pronounced in females to center their weight when carrying a fetal load. Females have an additional wedged vertebra, reducing shearing forces and supporting pregnancy. Despite these adaptations, there are challenges introduced by bipedal locomotion in the birthing process. Fetal rotation is not solely for accommodating a large cranium, but also related to the broad, rigid shoulders characteristic of hominoids. Shoulder dystocia Obstruction of the infant's shoulders is associated with increased mortality when combined with a platypaloid pelvis. This suggests that shoulder size may have been a constraint and a cause for selection in early hominid births. Limited fossil evidence makes it challenging to fully understand ancient birth mechanisms. The pelvic remains of Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus provide some insights. Australopithecus afarensis AL2881 fossil exhibits male-like features and a hyperplatypaloid shape, indicating a non-rotational birth mechanism. Australopithecus africanus also suggests a non-rotational birth. The Ghona Homo erectus pelvis dated to 0.9 to 1.4 million years ago 
indicates ongoing changes in the human pelvis to accommodate bipedalism and encephalization. Unlike non-human primates, human infants emerge from the birth canal facing away from the mother. This position hinders the mother's ability to clear the infant's breathing passageway or remove the cord from around the neck. Attempting to guide the infant from the birth canal in this position may risk damage to nerves and muscles. This suggests that with the origin of bipedalism, the risks associated with unassisted birth increased, leading to the presence of others during childbirth. The transfer of authoritative knowledge from the birthing woman to the attendants may have begun around 5 million years ago, when seeking assistance during delivery became beneficial for the survival and health of both mother and infant. As the genus Homo underwent encephalization, the conflict between large brains and narrow birth canals intensified. Delayed brain growth in the postnatal period may have been a compromise. The earliest Homo species may have had a pelvis adequate for delivering infants with half the size of adult brains. These infants were likely more advanced and less helpless at birth than contemporary human infants. The assistance during birth was essential for the successful delivery of more helpless infants and could be seen as a prerequisite for the continued increase in brain size in hominids. The evolutionary history of humans includes a long period where control of birth resided entirely within the laboring female. However, the emergence of bipedalism around 5 million years ago, the presence of an attendant during childbirth became crucial for guiding the infant through the birth canal and assisting with neonatal respiration. This shift was likely influenced by increased vulnerability and challenges associated with delivering more helpless infants. The emotional impact of birth, combined with encephalization and the origins of consciousness, may have led to the desire for companionship during childbirth. Natural selection has played a role in shaping this behavior through its impact on mortality and morbidity. Understanding human birth in its evolutionary context is essential for comprehending the historical foundations of the various cultural systems of knowledge surrounding childbirth. Complications in the birthing process are a result of evolutionary mismatch between the large-brained offspring and the small, narrow birth canal in humans. Two serious complications arise from this constraint. Cephalopelvic disproportion, where the fetal head is too large to enter the birth canal, and shoulder dystocia, where the shoulders become larger during birth. In the past, these complications often led to death for both the infant and the mother. However, the invention of caesarean section has improved survival rates. There is a debate among anthropologists regarding the perception of difficult birth. Some argue that it's a myth perpetuated by biomedical community, while others suggest that complications may be misinterpretations of birth variability. Different birth mechanisms are observed in various cultures, such as secreting positions during delivery. Tolerance for birth variability is decreasing in modern society, with shorter time limits for natural delivery and increased reliance on operative interventions. Understanding the evolution of birth requires a comprehensive understanding of modern biological and cultural variability, as well as an examination of non-human primate birth process. The skeleton adaptations associated with bipedalism had significant impacts on the birth process, and the compromises made in the female body have resulted in a unique human birth mechanism. The evolution of birth has had a profound impact on natural selection, as complications during childbirth can lead to death of both mother and fetus, directly influencing the gene pool and shaping human evolution more than any other skeleton or cultural adaptation.